By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, I hope everybody's doing well. well. Um, these are strange times, definitely. I am, like many of you, also working from home. And uh, today I have a match. I just thought let's put up some extra matches. So I have a special Sunday match. And uh, this is a match that was recorded earlier in the year. And we are going to look at a troll disco deck taking on a five color singleton deck. Now, before we're going to the game itself, I want to do a quick deck tech on both these decks. It's going to be pretty short. But I just want to take a moment to discuss the cards. If you want to go straight to the game, you probably already know this. You can go down below to the description and there you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it'll take you straight to game number one. The first deck that I would like to take a look at is the Troll Disco deck. Now, uh, this deck is named after Nevenaro's Disc and often Troll and Setch Troll. Now, the modern version of Troll Disco usually only has the Setch Troll. And the reason I'm showing the Setch Troll and the Mistress Factory here under the Nevenerals disc is because these were two creatures. Well, Mistress Factory is a land, but you know, it's also a creature, you can animate it. But these are two cards that go extremely well with the disc. You activate the disc, you regenerate the troll, and the Mistress Factory, you don't animate it, so it, it doesn't get killed by the disc. And everything's gone off of the board, and you have your Setch Troll and your Factory left to deal damage. That's, you know, in a nutshell, that's the, the big idea of Troll Disco. Um, of course, you're playing with Blacks, so you're playing with Mind Twist, you're playing with Demonic Tutor. The interesting thing here is that this Troll Disco deck also carries Blue Power and some other surprises. I believe this player is playing with Twiddle, and Twiddle is an interesting choice because, I mean, you can, with Twiddle, you can, obviously, you can untap your disc. It's not, it is interesting. So I'm really looking forward to see if, if it's worth to board in Twiddles in your Troll Disco deck or not. So we'll see. I'm keeping an eye out for, for Twiddle. Let's take a look at the other deck, the Five Color Singleton. And the deck that is taking on this Setch Troll army is the Five Color Singleton deck. Now we've had this deck a few times on the channel just because it's so incredibly spectacular. It's built by uh, Richard. You can find him on Instagram. I believe it's old school MTG underscore NL. Um, the nice thing of this deck is because it's a singleton deck, there are only singles in this brew, but I mean, do not underestimate it. It is fully powered. And there you see the picture of the three blue power cards, Time Walk, Time Twister, and Ancestral Recall. It also has all the Moxen, it has a Black Lotus, and then it's got a lot of really cool cards. And I just picked three of them that I don't see very often, or, well, you see Rook Egg more and more these days, but Elvish Archers and Remove Soul are definitely cards you don't see a lot. Uh, Elvish Archers, you used to see a lot of play back in the day. It was a very popular card if you would play with green. I mean, Gris Grizzly Bears is one green and one for a 2-2, and this is one green and one for a 2-1, but with First Strike. So it was a very popular card, and it's also a rare. I mean, don't forget that. Uh, Remove Soul, I think it's good. I think it can work in a lot of decks. It's a very interesting card. Usually, in a lot of decks, you want to counter the big, beefy creatures. So, I mean, with remove soul you can do this and it's only blue and one you don't need the double blue anymore so especially when you're playing a lot of colors like obviously in this five color singleton counter spells like this i like to call them creative counter spells uh, can be of a lot of value okay so this is the singleton deck i'm really curious how this is gonna pan out because it's hard to kind of predict how these games go when you when one of the two decks is a singleton deck like this so let's quickly go to the games and uh, see what's gonna happen game number one is about to start here and the player on the left is playing with the five color singleton deck the player on the right with the timmy playmat is avert and he's playing with a disco troll now they're rolling the dice to see who gets to start here and it looks like the singleton deck can take it away, drawing the cards here. And with this angle, we kind of have a look at the hand. Oh, they're showing it even, goes a little fast. I saw a strip mine, tropical island, is that a side blast? And there we see a set troll and some other cards, but okay, we're getting started here. Savannah, basic island, nice, into a mana vault. That's another card that you don't necessarily think about when you're thinking about uh, Disco Troll, but it makes sense because you've got your discs to blow everything up. So 
you're just going to blow up your mana vault, use it for three to cast a disc, and the next turn blow it up. There we see a Black Lotus from the Disc Control player, but no spell after that, no follow up. And there is that strip mine that we saw in the opening hand on the Batlands. Of course, that Black Lotus can make any type of mana. Oh, look at that, some blue power here, drawing three cards from Ancestral Recall. Like I said in the introduction, these are two very powerful decks. Soul Ring Chaos Orb finding its way to the battlefield here. And maybe Richard is now regretting having played that uh, Disenchant earlier. Because, of course, it's so good to play a Disenchant upon activation of Chaos Orb. Let's see what Avert can do. Going through its cards, finding a strip mine as well. Is he going to strip? Maybe that's what he's thinking about right now. And he is taking away the blue mana, knowing that Richard is playing with five colors and is playing with... Oh, actually, you're just going on the land destruction train here, and that's a hit. And there's a set draw. And this is what you see often when you have a Chaos Orb on the battlefield and you also have some type of land removal. It's a nice opportunity to just take two lands, destroy two lands of your opponent and kind of get ahead. And there we see that 2-1... Beautiful Elf, 2-1 First Striker, hitting the board, but it's it's no match against the Setch Troll, so he's just going to take the damage, going to 17 here, and there we see a Demonic Tutor. Oh, I'm never happy when I see my opponent cast a Demonic Tutor, I'm like, oh, what's he going to look look up for and we know that he's not going to look up in ancestral recall because it's already in his graveyard that's usually um the the choice the card of choice with the demonic tutor there we see in the text it's going to 18 both players still have a lot of life but at this point there's definitely advantage for the troll disco player with that many permanents and of course casting that demonic tutor is he going to do anything with the demonic tutor Ooh, it looks like he is. Okay, so he looked up the Mind Twist. And there goes the hand. Ah, that beautiful Curd Ape. Also the Rook Ack. They're all disappearing into the graveyard. And it's always a problem when you're playing. You're looking at your graveyard and it's filled with cool cards that you haven't cast. And the graveyard of Avert is telling a completely different story. There's another Setch Troll here. Is there, ooh, there's not a balance. I wanted to say, is there a balance? Because that, that would have been really nice. If he has one, by the way, he'll probably chum block on his elf. Going to zero creatures. That's what he's doing right now. So maybe a follow-up could be a balance. Of course, he also has the Sylvan. But being on a low life total, it's going to be difficult for him to draw extra cards from the Sylvan. He is doing it, though. Look at this. What are we going to see? Taking another one is Sarah Angel. <laughs> and they're giving each other a fist bump, which is completely completely understandable. Oh, and look at that. Okay, using a twiddle and then to kill him off with two Satch Trolls. Very stylish, very stylish gentleman. I, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, okay, these players are going to go and have a look at their sideboards and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two with Richard, the singleton player, on the play here because he lost that first game against Avert sitting on the right with his Setch Troll deck. And let's see what Richard can do. He needs to win this one. Soul Ring into a Flower Stone. At least this is a good start. Hopefully he can follow it up in turn two with something impressive. Let's see what Avert can do. He's a little bit in the tank here. And let's playing a bad lance. Is there a follow up to this or just a pass turn? There it is, a mox or sorry, a black lotus, but not doing anything else. And this scavenger folk could be quite useful. And you can see Avert thinking now, what do I want to do here? Is considering to sacking the lotus, going for three blue here, playing a mana drain. Taking care of the scavenger folk 
and with the extra mana from the Lotus also casting there a Shatter to take care of the Soul Ring. Very nice play, interesting to see this line and from the extra mana from the Mana Drain he manages to play a Setch Troll and all of a sudden the Richard is a little bit in trouble here even though he has that Black Lotus now on the board as well. Look at that blue elemental blast, of course using the flower stone to make the blue mana because his opponent has an island. Really nice to see these line of events here in the opening few turns. There is a demonic tutor, it just doesn't stop after that maze of if. And maze is always a very annoying card and I'm not sure if there is, I do know there's an ice storm in that deck of Richard. But of course, it's only a one-off playing with Singleton. And it's his turn. Untapping here with the Flower Stone. Playing a Tygo. Oh, look at this. A Triskelion. And then it's... ah, It's a little sour, I guess, that you have that Maze of If on the battlefield. Ah, of course, Ancestral Recall. Oh my goodness. And you can just see the power. He, of course, he used his Demonic Tutor to look up the Ancestral Recall. That's kind of your basic play. And of course, it's a basic play for a reason because it's probably the best thing you can do in a lot of situations, including this one. So he's got a full grip of cards. He's got his mace. He's got his lands. So I would say that the Troll Disco deck has advantage again. Tapping here for four, and there is a disc. And of course, with the disc, he can, he can destroy three permanents at Richard's side, and he only loses two, the disc and the sapphire. Not sure if that would be enough motivation for Aver to use it, but playing against an untapped disc is just as annoying as your opponent using it. Maybe even more annoying. And let's see, Aver's looking at his hand. And the question is, does he want to play out anything? And look at this, playing very aggressively, activating the disc, of course, three damage there dealt by Richard with the Triskelion. And I'm sure there's going to be a strong follow-up play now. There is a Soul Ring tapping for two directly into a Chaos Orb. And is he going to take away one of his lands? And we've, we've seen him doing this. Oh, and he's showing that he has so much artifact removal, but it's useless now. Also because the Felwer Stone is gone. Although there's no white mana to make with the Felwer Stone. But this is very sour here for Richard. And it looks like our game two is going to be a short one. Passing turn to passing turn here. Playing a Pixies and a quick Lightning Bolt. Avert is just not allowing any permanence on the side of Richard to stick. Just a couple of lands is all there is to it. And look at that, a Sheevan Dragon. Oh, and there's a Time Walk. Okay, okay. Library of Alexandria. I mean, he is still on 20. It's hard to see his life total, by the way. It's on that little blue... A D20 that's tucked away in the corner attacking now and there we see it he's going to 13 there pumping two right a time walk oh man Richard the magic gods are not in your favor at least not for this game falling down to six at least finding something a balance sweet this is nice to see only three in hand here He's going to lose his Sheevan. Isn't it, isn't it fantastic that he plays with a Sheevan, by the way? I mean, how cool is that? A Troll Disco deck with a Sheevan. That's fantastic. And he actually has to discard a card. Discarding there his Chain Lightning. Of course, you, you can't use it against the Factory anyway. And he's now on three life, so he has to deal with that Factory. He cannot. He just passed his turn. That means he's going to one... Or maybe he has a lightning bolt, who knows. Passing turn, he's not even attacking, interesting. Maybe remembering, does he have those still, that uh, those two artifact removal pieces that he showed earlier, the Disenchant Divine Offering? Passing again, so I'm surprised that Richard is still alive. Ooh, very risky doing this just to cast a Kurt Ape. He must really like Kurt Apes. There's a Setch Troll. And what can he do? Still cannot activate his Loa. Tapping three. Interesting, interesting. 
a mind twist here. And there's going to be some action from, yeah, there's a shatter on the sapphire and a terror on the monkey, on the Kurt ape. And is this the end of Richard? You seem to be having some discussion, but Richard is not giving up yet. There's a terror and then he dies and then, okay, they're kind of replaying it. Not sure why. Uh, it's not looking good for Richard. I am surprised that he's alive still in the first place. I mean, that balance was fantastic. So was the Sheevan Dragon by Avert, by the way. Uh, Avert going to 16 because of that Mana Vault. And this is probably, this is probably game here attacking. What is he going to do? Oh, interesting. Divine Offering means he goes to 3 because he gains life. But it's not enough. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Okay. <laughs> For a moment there I thought, does Richard have some kind of like insane step or, uh, or idea how to, um, how to come back from this? But uh, no, he does not. And this was the game. So just a short game for today. A 0-2 uh, victory for the Disco Troll deck. But still a lot of cool and beautiful cards. I mean, just, just look at those collections. It's, uh, it's stunning. Thank you for Richard and Avert for sharing this matchup here on the channel on Timmy Talks. If you want to support us, you can do so by subscribing, leaving a comment, sharing this vid on your socials. Click the notification bell and you can also become a Patreon. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.